not for. If I tell you how we sold fuel, we used to have a fuel dump when I was governor. Fuel dump. It was costing us almost 30 million a month. I said, what is this? They said, hey. I said, shut it down. I found out that my convoy in the first two weeks, because it was about 22 vehicles, was costing us about 300 now, about 300,000 to buy fuel. Of course, they you know what happens to half of it. So I said, okay, you know what we are going to do? Bring down the convoy. People in Anambra here, yeah, I don't use that. I asked them, carry this thing and go. Pack it. My convoy is five vehicles. And you cannot buy fuel unless I'm inside the car. So I will pay them. No more. That are here, it is your future that they are toying with. I have children, I have kids, I have two lovely children that are graduates. Somebody told me yesterday, just yesterday, he said to me, My friend, she that we were going somewhere, and I was telling him about the text my daughter sent to me. I wish I read that type of text to you, and you will understand. And somebody said to me, Oh, I saw your son going to that one was in Vietnam. He was going to run somewhere. He said he's going for interview for job. Peter, can't you give him a job? Peter, can't you do this? The boy doesn't even have... I said, none of my children have car. I was the only person who is governor and bank chairman. Not to them. Nobody elected them one. They have to look for a job. They have to do what they need to do. Take back your country. This country belongs to you. It is your future that they are toying with. You must take it back from them. It is not their country. And you must take it back from them. And how will you take it back from them? How will you take it back from them? When they invite you, go to your local government and ask the local government chairman, who receives 100 million naira every month? What does he do with it? He will tell you no problem. Yes, he's buying new jeep. This is somebody who has never seen car in his life. He now uses jeep. His wife has become first lady of the local government. <laughs> you go everywhere, a convoy will pass you. They say it's first lady of the, of the state. First what? This man, this woman is like they used to tell me then, hey, Peter, you're not treating your wife fairly. Peter, you're not doing this. That this is this. I said, no. There's so many costs. If I tell you little, if I have time and tell you cost of governance here, you won't be here. When I came back, when I started, we had about 10 go governor's guest house. I said, what is governor going to do with this? I go to work in the morning and go back in the evening. I come back. My cook then will cook about food that about 50 people will eat. I said, what is this for? They were killing one cow every day. I said, what is this for? He said, Oh, oh, Your Excellency, I'm doing it in case if you come back with people. I said, have you ever seen me come back here with anybody? <laughs> so why are you cooking for the people? Any day people will come here, I will let you know. Cook for only one person. One person. <laughs> me. I said, don't do it. You know, I come from Anambra State. There's too many big men. Of course. Like I tell them, I said, don't allow any of them to come here. I don't have what it takes to entertain them. So what they do, they phone me, Peter, I want to see you. I come to your house in the evening. So I go to his house. Because there he will bring, there he will bring his champagne, eat his uh, fabulous food, and at times when I'm going, they will give me something to take back. Goodbye. But don't go to government house. Because government house is not a restaurant. It's not a place to drink champagne. A bottle of champagne, a bottle of champagne, a bottle of champagne today costs about 400,000, 500,000. That is salary of 20 people at 20, 20,000. And you drink it with the public money. No, you can't do that. If you, be, if you want to do that, you go to your house. 
So I said to them, no, this is government money. We brought down the cost of feeding governor. If I tell you where I brought it down from, to this place, I say, this will be enough. Don't worry about me. And I can go on and on. You can go and work with people. It's not anything. It's not any magic. I fly every flight I've taken in Nigeria as a governor was the economy. Reason is simple. If I come and say business class, 54,000. Another one, you go to the internet, it's 19,000. Is it not just from Abuja to this for 40 minutes? Why would I pay additional thousand? I said no. I went to Young Shagura and said, your hotel in Abuja, can you give me this guy? He gave me 50%. So to sleep there is 30,000 naira. And I said, no, these things, that is what people want me to go to another bigger hotel and stay for 250,000 naira. And people say, oh, Peter, is it? I said, well, I have a problem. If I sleep there and pay somebody 250, I will be awake. I wouldn't go to sleep. Because I think they've stolen my money. Because I would think they have stolen my money. So it is important that you understand our government, we need to shut down cost of governance. No state government needs a house in Abuja. The government doesn't live in Abuja. They don't need all this. Nobody wants to kill you. I was governor for eight years without bulletproof car. I must tell you that I bought one, but I didn't use it and nobody killed me. I was using Prado. They would say, hey, it's not a uh, balance, it's not this. I don't think they keep telling me that government vehicles, because of the high traffic, is every six months. I say, wait, if you remove this car from here, because you know what they do? They take it in auction and say, I say, no. This car is here for the time. We will use it. It's emotional. What do you people think you're doing to yourself? We must shut down. And people say, where do you get money to say? Where do you get money? We got those monies. We were owing gratuities and pension of people for 35 billion. We were able to pay it. Because we have to shut down everything. I said, this cannot happen. Nobody will ever tell you that you came to a party while I was governor for eight years. It's not a bar, it's not a nightclub. No, it's governor's lodge. When I finish, I go home. If anybody wants to dance, he goes to nightclub. That is his business. And I, I take a, so all I'm trying to say is that we can change. No visitor will we put in a hotel if you have any value to offer. And go and check. We are number one in implementation of MDG. We got an award for it. I spoke at the UN. Go to European Union, we are number one in European Union while I was there. Why am I saying this? We were able to meet up every obligation. So my dear people, yes, it's good to stay here and feel bad and do everything, but let me beg you, you have no other country except this one. And only you can build this. If anybody is telling you, those people out there, they don't know you. They don't care about you. If they care, they will do things differently. You will see it in their behavior. You will see it in the way they do things, the way they feel, the way they move, and everything. And that, because they are doing that, what I beg you is that you must, like Olisa pleaded, get up and decide to join politics. Get up and decide to be part of it. The man who is leading revolution in Hong Kong is 17 years old. He's 17 years old. My dear people, the society we have them to abuse today will take his revenge on all of us tomorrow. Thank you and God bless you. <laughs>